Hi and welcome to the video. I've put some uh, sensors on my water tank to measure how much water is in them so that I don't have to go and check them all the time and I can top them up automatically and all that sort of automation goodness with Home Assistant. In this video I'll show you first how I set up the bore tank, so that's the one here, and how that system works, where the pressure sensor is and how it's connected, and then I'll walk you through how I set up the house tank from start to finish because that is a little bit of a different uh, setup, I guess, because the tank is in the ground rather than on the ground. But enough of that, let's get into looking at the bore tank. Hello, here's a uh, bore pump shed. Uh, there's a bore tank. And uh, I thought I'll show you how I measure the tank level here first and just explain a bit about what go what's going on because it's, um, it's kind of simple when you know how but it took me an awful long time to figure out what the hell to do. So, um, initially, we thought about measuring that level in that bore tank there with, uh, from the top. So basically having a, you know, something that says an open top, but something that measures the depth or until the water hits and we can measure how much then height and water, etc. mathematics. Um, there's a few problems with that. One is you got to hang something over the top of it, which is tricky. It's out in the open, so it's going to be weatherproof, etc. Um, the where do you get put the signal where do you get the signal to all that sort of stuff so uh, my good friend Taylor Modi then said hey why don't you use a pressure sensor and I'm like aha very good idea so the setup here and I'll show in just a minute is that there is a pressure sensor that measures how much um, pressure the water gives in that tank and then sends the signal via an M5 stack which I'll show you what that is as well into home assistant so the way the pressure works is basically it's the height of the water. It doesn't matter if you have a very, very wide amount of water, it's the height of it. So the pressure sensor just works on height. Um, and that's the key here is to get the pressure sensor at the bottom of the water body or body of water. So, all right, let me show you what actually goes on with the setup. So here we are the other side of the bore tank. So there's a little bit of a plastic pipe, the orange one, I'll get to that in a minute, but in here, just got to walk through the fence <laughs> down here what is where the pressure sensor is so you can see it right there now that has to be in that position because um, that's where the bottom of the water is the pressure and before this thing here which I can't remember what's called but it basically has a one-way valve inside of it so if you put the valve or the pressure sensor on the other side of it you don't get the right pressure because that might shut on and off. We did that at first and the pressure was all over the place. So it has to sit there. Now obviously this is uh, out in the open. So it has a signal coming out of it here, analog signal. So that is what goes through all this thing here and up there, way up, and it goes over the tank. All right, so let me just crawl out again here. Mm -hmm. Ow. And it goes all the way over here up along and through this pipe here and into the pump ship because in here there is power and there is shelter. So in here you can hear the pumps running as well. That comes out of the roof, up there, and it goes all the way down here. There's some really good cable management because we had too much wire. And that sits inside this little thing here, which is the M5 stack atom light. So there's a light on it just to see that it's working. The wires are plugged into there. So this is a typical farm setup. You can see it there, very, very secure, but it works. And that has a Wi-Fi module in it. And it's powered obviously there with power and USB. And that now means I have a Wi-Fi connection from the pressure sensor in the bore tank all the way to Home Assistant. So that's how it sets up here. This is the um, test bed for the house tank pressure sensor. So the actual pressure sensor is that one. Oh, let me just focus for you. Right there, that's the pressure sensor. That's my M5 stack atom light, which is the, uh, the, it gets the signal from the pressure sensor and turns it from analog into a digital signal. And that little thing there also has a Wi-Fi module in it, so it can send it off to Wi-Fi. Uh, we've hooked it up to this um, kind of test bed here so that we can modulate the pressure with this little you know, 
So you can see on the dial here, the pressure can go up and down. You can turn the knob that's there and it'll go take the pressure up. So right now it's just obviously at zero bar, it's, or one bar, it's just air pressure. Um, it's hooked in, it's on Wi-Fi, and over here I've got the laptop, and you can just see that it's sending out all sorts of voltages. Uh, maybe a bit hard to see, but those are all measurements coming into Home Assistant. So this is the ESP Home integration for Home Assistant, um, and it's like 0.43 volts or something, which equates to empty, roughly. Um, so that's what we're going to use. This is just to make sure that before we install it, uh, it'll work. And when we install it, it's going to go into this uh, metal cylinder here. That's where the pressure sensor is going to be inside, just sticking out so we get the pressure. Because it is an underground tank, so we don't actually have ground level clearance. So we have to stick it in the tank uh, right at the bottom. Uh, and we're going to, yeah, you'll see that in a second. But that's the idea. So, so far, it's working well. But we could just try and just turn this knob up. Give it a bit more pressure. Let me just show you the pressure here. As we turn the knob, yeah. You can see here there's air pressure coming in. Maybe. There we go, it's going up. So as the air pressure goes up, you can then test what voltage comes out on the other end, which means that on the screen here, you can now see that there's roughly 0.75 volt instead of 0.43 volt. So that's what I'm using to measure how much water's in the tank. It's actually the pressure of the water on the sensor. But um, all right, next. This is now assembled, so all of the bits are put together. You can see that it's all been nicely um, taped up so that it should be waterproof. Um, there's a lot of silicon inside of it. You can just see the pressure sensor is sticking out there. So that's gonna be what's gonna measure the pressure of the water at the bottom of the water tank. And there's the wires coming out here, so that's all sealed up. Uh, and then the wires uh, are yet to be heat shrinked here, this bit here where the soldering is, that's gonna be heat shrinked. And then there's the whole wire that goes around, round, 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 etc., etc., etc. And there's a lot of it because we need a couple of meters. And then that all goes back down here to the M5 stack Atom Light, which is going to measure the the signal from it and tell us how much water's in it. So, um, whew, almost there. All right, so this is the house tank, those are llamas, and this is in ground. So the bore tank I showed you before, we just put the pressure sensor at the bottom of the tank, A, water pressure, right? We can't do that here because we don't have access to the bottom of the tank, it's in the ground. So we've created this thing, pipe bomb. No, it's not, it's not. Um, I showed you before that has the pressure sensor. So that's gonna go in the tank so that we get the pressure at the bottom, ergo, all the water we'll put the pressure on that switch and we can get a reading of how much water is putting pressure on it so we can get a voltage, so we can do maths and calculate how much water's in the tank. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's a complicated setup, so it's very different from any of the other water tanks that we've set up. Um, but um, yeah, let's put it in.
So now the sensor is in the house tank and you can see it's getting a reading here. Uh, these are all the readings different here. Point, I'll just scroll down, there we go. 0.53, etc., etc., volts. And I am uh, then using that to calculate the amount of water, amount of liters in the house tank. Now you might be asking, well, how do you even get that signal into Home Assistant? And that is through something called ESP Home, which is on the left here. Now, ESP Home is a plug-in to Home Assistant that allows you to basically program ESP32 boards, which is what is inside of the uh, M5 stack Atom Light. And it's a very, very simple process of actually programming it. Now, I'm not going to go through that, but in the description of this video, I have linked to another video by my good friend Tay the Modi about how to do this. And Tay them goes through it in great detail and it's super easy to follow. So go there, find out how to program the M5 stack, uh, Atom Light, to, to make it work with your sensor. And then it'll show up in here. Now in here, the water pressure house tank, uh, sensor house tank, I can go into the logs and I can see what it's actually sending to me right now. So there's a whole bunch of obviously uh, log data, but there's the voltage start to come in. And the voltage is 0.54 volt. Now it actually comes in with six decimal di uh, points, but in this case it's just showing 0.54. Now the way it works is that I take a reading every 10 voltages that I get, and that uh, every 10 is a median value of the last 35. That allows me to kind of iron out any bumps or weird voltages that suddenly comes in for whatever reason. There's atmospheric disturbances or something. And it just makes it much, much, much better um, output that I can then use for, for monitoring my water level. So this is the logs for it. Let me show you in here. You can go into your developer tools. Uh, sorry, rather your supervisor. And I have a file editor that I can see the files on the Home Assistant Raspberry Pi. So in here in the file editor, here's my configuration YAML. And you can see down here in the uh, list of sensors, I have all of the different sensors for the for the tanks. And again, Tatham goes into this in great detail of what this all means and how it works. But I want to show you the maths of this. So in terms of the uh, bore tank, you can see here there's a, a bore tank liters. Now, I have already calculated the bore tank volume, and that's obviously just mathematics. It's the radius and the height, um, you know, and you times it with pi times 2, um, and then I times it with 1,000 just to kind of um, get the actual liters out of it. Um, and then I round it. So this is all just mathematics, but that's how I get the volume of how much water is in or can fit in my tank, because I need that to show the graphs. And then I have down here the bore tank liters, there and I get the voltage. Now I know through trial and error that 0.44 is roughly zero. So when there's no water in the tank, that is roughly the voltage that I get out. And then through mathematics, I am calculating um, how much water would be in it um, at one um, volt. If there was one volt in there, there would be a lot of water. And then around that, and that gives me the actual liters that are in the tank. And then I've done the same with the house tank down here, house tank liters. You can see I am using n.44 for this. That does change a bit. You can see the tank over at Chris's place is 0.41 volt is roughly zero. It does change a little bit depending on where the sensor is located and the atmospheric pressure and a whole bunch of other things. So it's a bit of trial and error. And then times what that would be at one volt. And that gives me the, the number of liters in it as well. And that's the same with the bullshit tank, which is for our BNB. So that's where I set up all of the maths to calculate back here in the overview. So I have a voltage coming for the bore tank or the house tank down here. See the bore tank voltage and the house tank voltage, etc. And that's what's being translated into liters. And because I know how big the tank is, I can then show this nice graph of how full the tank is. So that's how it all works together on Home Assistant. Again, go and see Tatham's video if you want to learn how to program the actual M5 stack Atom Light. It is not difficult. There's just a bunch of steps you need to follow. Uh, there's probably no coding involved. The most coding you'll see is what I just showed you, the YAML file. But other than that, everything is done through Home Assistant. It's a very smooth experience. 
I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you like more content like this, please subscribe to my channel, like the video, uh, put a comment in. If you've got a better way or different way of, of measuring water tank levels, let me know. I'd love to learn more about how I can do this better. But I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.